This pitch breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins. The company that I founded here in Charlotte is called CloudGenera. We're a computer software company and we help businesses build the justification to change the way that they invest in their technology. Some of you may have heard about the cloud market. It's one of the biggest trends that's happening in enterprise computing today. It's a $250 billion market. And our software platform is helping companies adopt those technologies. Many businesses are struggling to, to determine and define the justification to invest in these services. At the same time, people in the business are leveraging these services at an increasing rate. This is creating a lot of disruption in the market. And so I'm happy to say in the two years that we've been in business, we've grown our company from a concept to a prototype to a product to now a million dollar reoccurring subscription revenue stream. Highly diversified in terms of the customers that we've been able to acquire. Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, and VMware, all are paying customers to our business. And so some of you may be familiar with these enterprise companies. These are the companies that all of the companies in town spend a bunch of money on in terms of servers, storage, networking, software. You know, we're helping to serve these businesses and driving those technologies into the market. At the same time, we've also acquired a number of channel partners, people who sell technology into enterprises in the mid-market and the SMB space. We have over half a dozen companies that are either service providers or solution providers leveraging our technology to help their customers make better decisions around where they're spending their money on technology. And then finally, we've also acquired large enterprises like Duke Energy here in town, companies that are interacting and leveraging our software directly to address these challenges that I described with regards to adoption of technology. We've created 23 jobs, 13 of them here in Charlotte. We're looking to double our organization. We've already had a successful fundraising round, and Chris mentioned to me that that was going to be six months of excruciating pain, and he was absolutely right. Um, but the good news was, and this is a challenge for anybody in the audience that's thinking about starting a company in Charlotte, that we were able to create an enterprise play. We were able to get it funded, and it was actually well oversubscribed. And so with that, I'm going to give back five seconds and uh, open it up to, to you gents to ask some questions. So, so it's an enterprise market. What, what does your product actually do? Like, how does it help them justify the spend on tech? So what we offer is a decision engine. So 451 Group calls it the most comprehensive decision engine that they've seen in the market. Customers describe their requirements. They describe what they need. Who's going to use it? What's the purpose of the technology? What does it do for the business? What service level do you need? What concerns do you have about security? What dependencies do you have around technology? And what does your total cost of ownership look like today if this is an existing solution that you run in your business? Once that's described within our platform, our software automates the process of analyzing all of the different options that exist out there in the marketplace. Options for you to continue to invest in technology in your data center, options to subscribe to other folks' services in other data centers, either as infrastructure, platforms where people are developing new applications, as well as applications as a service. Cool, and then get kind of your go-to-market strategy. Are you planning, you've got channel partners, how, how much of that is your strategy, is it working, and then how much is kind of inside, outside sales? Yeah, so the business is built to scale. And so my background, I used to work at VMware, one of my current customers. I was a strategy executive for them on the East Coast. And one of the things I learned about VMware, what made them really special as a business, is that while they had direct field reps focused on the Fortune 100, which is a part of our go-to-market, they were able to tap into an ecosystem of 100,000 value-added resellers to drive the sale of their technology in the market. That is absolutely a huge part of our go-to-market strategy. So if you follow our transition over the last two years, we signed up manufacturers, we signed up channel partners, and then we signed up the end users. The inflection point for our business, why even though we had a successful raise in the summer, but we're back to the table looking to raise new money, right now I'm negotiating eight-figure deals with multiple distributors of technology to drive our solution across that 100,000 VAR ecosystem. Yeah. Cool. So, just really quick, just okay. congrats on the, on the traction because it's not easy. Anybody building enterprise software um, knows it's not, it's not an easy thing. Um, I would focus, when I look at a business like this, I know that, especially if you're working on really big deals, that the length of those is extraordinary. Yeah. So the money it takes and how hard that is and how many com convoluted things happen, uh, how many people are involved, is one of the biggest risk factors. Yeah. Could, and so hitting on that right away, could not agree that more. would allay my biggest fear. Yeah, could not agree more. And, and to that point, our average sales cycle is 31 days. Our average deal size is about 80 grand. Okay, so 
when we structured the business and when we went out, the big manufacturers surprisingly didn't take that long to onboard. You would have thought that'd be an 18 to 24 month process. Very quick to get those early manufacturers on board. The resellers, where we've done the most of the deals, again, kind of surprising that we were able to do these deals in a 31 day span. And again, the price point on average is 80 grand, low end 50 grand, high end 250. I'm building a discipline with my direct field to go out and do the singles and the doubles. I have a head of sales in Silicon Valley and myself here on the East Coast with a bunch of relationships where we're chasing the elephants. We're gonna make sure my team doesn't get distracted to your point about chasing the elephants. And so this is how we're diversifying our revenue. That you know, million dollar plus ARR comes from 13 different logos, right? It's not locked into one place. Yeah. So we do believe in go big, but at the same time, we've not lost sight on the fact that you need to build a repeatable cadence to go get those smaller deals to fund the business and not put yourself at the risk. So you know, the interesting thing for us for fundraising is that you know, we've been profitable multiple times in our life already. We're choosing to go unprofitable again because if I land an Ingram or an Arrow or an Avnet or a Tech Data and I haven't ramped up in terms of the resources to scale this thing, that's a big problem. But you know, just to be clear on how far along we are in this process, I'm already interacting with the CEOs of these companies directly and we have paper moving back and forth. So it's, it's not a, a distraction that we sought. It's one that kind of came to us as they looked at you have my end users, you have the people who are my customers, and you have my manufacturers, where do I fit? Cool. So, uh, Brian, Brian and I know each other, too. Um, the, uh, you're a really good presenter, you're really Thank articulate, you. and like you got lots of facts and data and that kind of stuff coming. Um, it's really good. Thank you. Um, is your customer the end user, or is it the cloud provider? It's both. When you look at our platform, Cloud Assist is targeted at the end user and those that service the end user. Cloud Adopt is the business intelligence for the service provider. Right. So that, and when we look at our business and, and how I built the business, I like these things kind of like Google where you connect multi-sided markets. And so we've worked really hard to build a strategy that serves both markets without causing conflict so that we're still viewed as agnostic and the impartial third party where you'd want to go and make this type of decision. So it seems like there are some com there are competing interests for you though because like there are obviously providers who have come to you and said hey man we want to give you some american dollars in exchange mm -hmm. for preferential exposition to the people who come and look at this stuff won't do it so you don't have any revenue associated with that right now oh not not the influence piece but the ability to tap into our leads and to tap into the market opportunity where we're really focusing on provider is the shift that's happening in the var community where there's 100,000 bars, give or take, depending on how you want to define them, value-added resellers, 10% mm -hmm. of them have already pivoted to become managed service providers. And so what does that mean? They're layering their service, right? Their human capital on top of these big service providers like the Amazons and the Googles and the Microsofts and the VMwares. Our platform, Cloud Adopt, gives them the mechanism to describe how they differentiate and what their value-add is. And so that's how we're able to monetize it. That's a much bigger market than letting an Amazon or a Google influence our algorithms and bias our results because then we're not adding true value in the market, right? I want to help people make decisions faster and I want to help them make better decisions. Okay, let's do the crap. What do you want to say? I want to start, uh, let's start with PG Cosmetics. So I, you know, I also know Brian met him first a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. Right here. So, so just for fun, how many of you feel like you understand what this company does? Raise your hand. How many of you have a little haze on that subject? Okay. Yeah, pe pe people who are people who are hazy, what's confusing? Yeah, please. What's missing? Does your software actually tell you which clouds to go to? If that's the right decision. Yeah, this is, a, this is a hugely valuable use case for companies. A lot of companies are looking at our software as sort of this convergence of portfolio management and IT cost accounting. So let's say I did go out and I bought a bunch of technology two years ago and I'm gonna depreciate it over a three to five year span. 
our software takes into account that depreciation schedule, gives you an annualized view of that expense stream, and then compares that to other available options that might be available. That could be a customer's private cloud, where they have a different model of delivering the technology versus you just going off and buying it as a department or a line of business. It could be public cloud options, and absolutely we will map you to the right providers, will automate the assembly of what they would ultimately sell you so that you can see that comparative side by side. And so for like Duke Energy as an example, they have very unique financial constraints on their business. Cloud, even when it's cheaper, might cost them more. Because every time they spend capital, it comes in our power bill. When it's an operating expense, that's something they have to internalize. And so since cloud is operating, not capital, for them it's not just when did I buy the servers, but can cloud save me all of the money I was gonna spend on capital and be either net neutral or cost advantaged as it relates to my operating budget. So this is absolutely a, a huge use case for us. Customers like to use the software to describe what they do today where they are in the life cycle of what they've bought, and then compare the alternatives. How do you weigh in uh, new software versus outside, right? Like, you know, how do you know whether the new cloud software uh, is it secure enough uh, to move on? If it's approved by your business, was that the question? Right, right. So how would you weigh those, those uh, you know? So this is why uh, companies want to have branded instances of our technology. Typically how they engage with us is they'll bring our software in initially to figure out what vendors make the most sense for their business. And then their executives, the CIOs, CTOs, will then implement governance through our technology to only show the options that they endorse their business to use. So a big problem that exists, especially in the large companies, is that shadow and rogue IT exists, where business people are going and buying cloud services and not including IT. Our software gives them a mechanism to help the business figure out if cloud is a good decision for them. And it implements governance through that process so that the business feels like they're being offered the options they're looking for. At the same time, this risk is reduced in terms of them going one-offs all over the place, and they can consolidate spend, and they can know where those, those key technology decisions are ultimately running in the world. How does that fee, how does that fee structure work? Is, is, it, is it based on uh, an aggregate cost savings? How does your fee structure work with your client? Total, it feels like one-time use to me, yeah. right? I was yeah. well, it, like, it feels like I come in, it's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's, there are definitely one and done use cases, right? And so in that model, we provide a pay per use type of opportunity. I'll give you an example, email and file sharing. I'm gonna make these decisions and I'm gonna be with them for the next five, 10, 20 years. But there's a shift that's happening right now where everybody's looking at their exchange and they're saying, should I go to Office 365? Should I go to Google? There's hundreds of partners out there that are just doing consulting around that. Those are one and dones. The ones that are more meaningful, DevOps, where people are changing the way that they develop software. They're moving over periods of many, many years from Oracle and IBM proprietary stacks to Red Hat stacks to other open alternatives. And our software helps them quantify the cost to make that transformation, identify when in that process does it make business sense to actually engage. And so we've templatized all of this in our platform, all of the transitions from the Oracle to the Red Hat, from, from the IBM, P series, which is another big one, down to the X series. This is a multi-year journey these companies are gonna go through. Portfolio management is not a one and done thing. Yeah. Once you've done some of these one-time use cases and have done multiple um, long-lasting use cases around how you develop and manage your technology, then all of the data lives in this platform. And that's actually a planned pivot in our business model that once you go through rationalizing your 1100 at Duke Energy, your 9000 at GE, your 10,000 at uh, Bank of America, all that data lives in our platform. And uh, back to the benchmarking, I think that's the most powerful component of your pitch that I would really stress. I mean, as, a, as an individual who manages my money, the, the fact that I could compare myself to people who are in my peer group, that was the thing where you had me hooked. We have the same vision for our business where long term we become a business intelligence play for the CIO. Now that all my apps are described in here, where is the biggest opportunity for me to drive savings, to drive efficiency in my business? Are we, are we shut down? Yes, we are. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you.